gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. That's enough, please. Your genuine applause has done the trick. I was, about, I was about to come out here and say, I'm not in the mood tonight, and then just leave, but your genuine enthusiasm to see me has changed my mind. <laughs> how, long, how many of these shows have we made? Like 1,400, something like that? For about 1,400 of these shows. I come out every night. Every night I come out here, I bang the thing, and then yeah, that noise happens. So I come out tonight, I bang it like crazy, nothing happens. What the hell? What the hell is that? I'm trying to be professional here. I do, the, I do the same joke over and over again in the hope that once, once we get it right. But no, 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 no. Apparently 1,400 times is not enough. <laughs> oh, man. Just when you thought we couldn't get any more crap. Tonight, we're going to take crap to a new level. <laughs> Lower. <laughs> Think of us as the limbo dancers of late night comedy. <laughs> how low can you go? <laughs> Pretty low. <laughs> it is, however, a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. It is. Yeah. A great day for America. Not such a great day on one American street. On Sesame Street, their website, this is true, their website was hacked and filled with porn. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, that's funny, yeah! <laughs> Hacked with porn. Let's just say those hackers did a lot more than tickle Elmo. <laughs> and it's still going on. Today's episode was brought to you by the letter O. <laughs> that's a good joke right there. Uh, that is. You know, the art world is going crazy right now. Uh, right now. Uh, I'm Scottish. There, no, they, uh, there's, the art world is going crazy. There's a new book out tomorrow. It's got a shocking revelation about Vincent van Gogh. By the way, is it Vincent van Gogh or Vincent van Gogh? I grew up saying Vincent van Gogh, but I'm from Scotland. And everybody says, oh, in Scotland. Like, oh! Like, You're not wearing pants again, Craig! Oh! Anyway, for the purposes of clarity, tonight I will pronounce the name Van Gogh. But, you know, I think it's Van Gogh. Anyway, I don't know. But for more than 100 years, everyone thought Van Gogh had committed suicide by shooting himself in the chest. But this book says it was... murder. <laughs> Is that why you never get that thing done? Because you were practicing for that thing? <laughs> you get one thing a night. Anyway, the book turns the conventional wisdom about Van Gogh on its ear. <laughs> That's a good idea. You know, if, if Van Gogh was with us today, I wonder what he'd say. What would he say? What? I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what other great artists would say, like uh, Dali. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Andy Warhol, I don't think he'd be too impressed. Eh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what about Frida Kahlo? Deus mio. All right. <laughs> it, was all, it was all that, all that stuff put you off doing the thing with it. I see what it was. Anyway, the authors of this new book, what they're saying, they really did their homework. They say that handguns were very rare in the south of France where Van Gogh lived. And they read the fair, the, the fair question, they say, is who would give a handgun to someone who is so insane they cut off his own ear? You know, they'd be like, well, what do you plan using the handgun for? I said, what do you plan? <laughs> oh, I don't care, just take it. <laughs> anyway, apparently Van Gogh wrapped his ear, he cut off his ear, he wrapped it in a newspaper and sent it to his favourite prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> 
The authors believe that this is a strong indication that Van Gogh was the worst tipper ever. <laughs> I wonder if that was his favourite prostitute. I wonder what the other prostitutes were thinking when the ear arrived, like, oh, thank God I'm his second favourite prostitute. <laughs> Up till now, my shoddy workmanship has been a source of shame. But now, I don't feel so bad. Anyway, the book says Van Gogh might have been accidentally shot by a local teenager. There's eyewitness accounts from people who saw them drinking together. Together. Yeah, I talk like this sometimes. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, the eyewitnesses were French and were all mimes. <sighs> Normally, I'd be skeptical of a theory like this, but I saw the whole thing last night on 60 Minutes. That's right, intelligent people. I'm just like you. <laughs> I'm not. I was watching 60 Minutes to see if Andy Rooney would storm back on the set. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you forget your porn and you leave it in your desk? Tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> anyway, the 60 Minutes piece about this was reported by Morley Safer, so you know it's accurate because Van Gogh died in 1890 and Morley Safer was there. <laughs> Morley Saver, in 1890, he was in his early 40s and he was working as a dancer at the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> All this and more, right after over these messages. I'm glad he moved on to journalism, although he still looks awesome in a frilly skirt. The best way to experience Van Gogh's achievements, though, is go to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. When I, I was there, I stood there in front of the paintings and I actually wept. I wept. I think I was overpowered by the sheer beauty of his vision. Or perhaps it was the mushrooms. <laughs> or it may have been the hooker who beat me up the night before. <laughs> My second favourite hooker. <laughs> Call me, Sven. Anyway, that... that right. The mind boggles, you know what, it, 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 it boggles my mind that Van Gogh never sold a painting in his lifetime. Now it's easy to look back and say, well I would have bought 40 of them. But the truth is, in terms of art, most of us don't know what we like until someone tells us we're afraid of looking stupid. I am obviously not. That's why I do this show. <laughs> but I'm amazed at the time people didn't see the power in something like this. Look at this. Look at that. How could you not go, oh wow, that's awesome. But people were distracted by the guy in the next village over who was painting this. Yeah, it's easy, man. <laughs> you can't fight that. <laughs> so I get nothing when I do that, but every time I do that, that, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Did you like Van Gogh? You like Van Gogh? What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> what are you talking about? I just wanted to just put the painting up for the rest of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> You don't like that painting? No, oh, I love that. I have it at my house. What, dogs playing the original? Dogs playing poker? That's actually a very valuable painting. No, I have actual dogs playing poker at my house. <laughs> actual dogs playing poker? Actual, you should come over and check it out. I'd love to. Uh, where is your house? It's in uh, Amsterdam. <laughs> Amsterdam? Amsterdam, really? That's a long commute to the show. I'll fly you over there. I've got my own jet. <laughs> Really? You're on jet? Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, you do it. You see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Seems to work for both of us. Well, that's good news. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, you want to do the. Uh... Yeah, let's do it. All right, then. Tonight's program is brought to you by a terrifying new horror classic. He was a brilliant painter until the night the potato eater became the brain eater. Craig Ferguson, Zombie Van Gogh.